We're here today with Jeff Edwards of Edwards Funeral Services in Columbus, Ohio, a pioneer in the use of alkaline hydrolysis in funeral service. So Jeff, tell us what we've got here. This is the, um, the system I'm sure you've seen in the news. It's the uh, alkaline hydrolysis or aquamation as I like to refer to it, uh, system. It was manufactured by Joe Wilson of Bioresponse Solutions out of Indianapolis. And it is an odd looking setup, but it is, you know, simple and, you know, clean green process. I'm going to open the door and show you what the inside of the chamber looks like. It's stainless steel vessel with a, hmm. I don't know what you call this, a tray, mm -hmm. a container that easily pulls out onto a table that we pull out here. The top and the bottom is two separate pieces. They are connected together with latches. The body, excuse me, the body is placed in here, and then the lid is put on the top, and then it's just slid back into the container like so. The body is, of course, weighed. This is very different than most flame-based cremation because the weight of the body is critically important to the amount of chemical that's used. It's a true chemical reaction, so mm -hmm. you can't just eyeball the weight of a body. Mm -hmm. Add the chemical, dry chemical, potassium uh, hydroxide and sodium hydroxide directly to the vessel. Simply close the door. And then raise the vessel into an operating uh, position. It is a tilt vessel for efficiency and optimization of the hydrolysis process is simply pull back on the safety and allow the machine to be raised gently. The body is placed into the vessel feet first. At this point I would come over to the computer touch screen and enter the weight, the name of the body, and press the start button. It's pretty much that simple. Once the process starts, it's going to add the appropriate amount of uh, water, or H2O, a uh, chemical if you will, mm -hmm. to the sodium hydroxide or mm -hmm. potassium hydroxide, and the body will naturally hydrolyze or decompose very rapidly. It mm -hmm. is the same process that Mother Nature performs in the, in the ground, aided by the bacteria of the soil, and the alkalinity of the soil. Um, this particular system, once it's in this position, only has a quarter horse motor that turns a, a prop or a propeller, which just keeps the water floating, rotating. Mm -hmm. Agitation is what that's called. And that allows fresh alkali to get to the various tissues of the body so that the chemical reaction can take place. Now when it's tipped like this, is the entire body submerged? At, once it's tipped, the, the, the body is submerged about 80% until the hydrolysis process brings the entire body down oh, okay. to so kinda... one point. Okay. A major difference in this piece of equipment versus some high pressure equipment is that when this is done and the vessel is brought back down, the basket pulled out, all of the remains, or the bone ash, is in one corner of the basket. Whereas with the high pressure, and as well as the flame base crematory, the bones are scattered throughout the vessel, so it's a lot more cleanup. It's just a little simpler. Okay. Um, it doesn't use nearly as much energy as a crematory, or nearly as much energy or resources as the high pressure, high temperature versions of the alkaline hydrolysis equipment. Mm -hmm. But you give up. Uh, speed. Uh, this particular vessel has about an eight hour turnaround time, so at most you could uh, completely hydrolyze three bodies in a 24 hour period if you were working three shifts, whereas with a high pressure, high temperature system from bioresponse, um, you can double that easily in a day. So you'd easily get six or seven bodies out of the high pressure system. And then depending upon the flame-based crematory, which is much uh, more, uh, much faster process, you know, some crematories can do 6, 8, 10, 12 bodies in a 24-hour period. Um, 
and you had uh, still a lot of interest in people wanting this method of disposition, even though oh, absolutely. You're, it's once, currently on hold here in Ohio. Absolutely. Once, yeah. you know, families, the public is not um, stupid by any means. They understand what alkaline hydrolysis is, and if they don't, simply explain it to them as it relates to the natural burial decomposition process, they get it. They understand that it's not a destructive flame-based process. They understand it's a very natural process. It's easier on the, the human psyche, if you will, when you allow the family to choose between flame-based cremation and alkaline hydrolysis. I have yet to find someone that says, no, I want to stay with the flame-based. They will prefer this just because it's, a, it's, 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 it's easier on the psyche. Mm -hmm. um, that's before you get to the green issues or the pollution issues that are non-existent with alkaline hydrolysis compared to the crematory. Um, well, I don't know, 15 percent of the public is, you know, the green movement, the clean green, and they're conscious of their footprint that they're leaving this earth with. Um, the bulk are choosing um, cremation or alkaline hydrolysis for, you know, economics. It's less expensive than a burial. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm prefer, you know, that simplistic uh, approach to the end of life, or uh, transition, if you will. Um, very clean, green machine. There's only three connections, a hot and a cold water, and then, of course, the drain. Um, the body is completely hydrolyzed or um, converted back to its natural elements. I mean, from the chemical chart that we all dreaded in chemistry class, Suspended in the water solution are those chemicals that once made up our body, because we are just, you know, chemical water bags, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, we're just basic chemi chemicals. Um, all of that is suspended in the liquid, and yes, it does get recycled back into our ecosystem via the wastewater treatment facility, mm -hmm. which is a hang-up that the news media likes to sensationalize and grab on. But it's sterile and it's uh, neutral pH, correct? It is EPA neutral. Okay. Which EPA neutral from a pH standpoint is 12.5. Very, you know, it's, it's safe. It's a high mm -hmm. caustic pH, but it's not dangerous to the human. Mm -hmm. um, a neutral pH is 7.0 or water that we drink. Mm -hmm. um, this system, depending upon the municipality that it's located in, can discharge the, the liquid effluent into the wastewater treatment facility at the pH that the local wastewater authorities require, which in some municipalities, like Chicago, for example, their requirement is like a 9 or a 9.5. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are drinking pH 10 water, alkaline water for health purposes, but it's just the parameter that they set. Mm -hmm. Here in Columbus, Ohio, 12.5 or, you know, the federal EPA neutral is what our parameters are, um, and that's what the process ends with. Mm -hmm. It starts at 14 with the raw chemical, sodium or potassium hydroxide, and then once the body eats up or uses that chemical, it brings the pH down naturally. We discharge it directly. Um, Carbon dioxide can be added at the very end of the process, and we're doing that up at uh, Mark Raposta's location up in Searsport, Maine, because Maine requires a lower pH than the 12.5. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the process, we just add a little bit of carbon dioxide, which is the same gas that they put into uh, soda pop. You know, give me mm -hmm. the bubbles. Mm -hmm. It's an acid, mm -hmm. and it brings the pH of the end effluent down so that it's within the parameters of their wastewater treatment facility. Great. Thank the pH, you. Oh. you know, just one more quick thing about pH is people mm -hmm. think, wow, 10 is high or 3, which is an acid, is dangerous. Well, the pH of Diet Coke is 2.5. <coughs> yeah, it's really strong acid. Uh -huh. And, you know, the pH of milk of magnesia, for example, which settles our tummy because we get too much acid in our stomach, mm -hmm. which is a high 10 to 11 pH. Hmm. Simple chemistry. Hmm. But this is the future. It's, it's, it's good for our planet, and um, it's better than flame-based cremation because it doesn't pollute the environment. We cannot continue to pollute the very air we need to breathe. Exactly. Thank you so much. You're welcome.